Welcome back guys to another episode of Deep Down Under. Today's target species is New Zealand kingfish. We're diving the Harakee Gulf and I have one of the most amazing dives of my life. There's no mucking around today guys, we're jumping straight into it. How lucky am I that my girlfriend's dad is a keen fisho with an absolutely awesome boat in New Zealand. Trevor was just as keen as me to get out on the water and show me what New Zealand spearfishing and fishing is all about. The weather wasn't good enough for the girls to jump on board, so lucky for us, we had the whole boat to ourselves. New Zealand had experienced a lot of rain leading up to this particular day, and we weren't really sure what the fishing or the visibility for spear fishing was gonna be like. But we were just keen to get out on the water. Trevor was straight onto a little snapper here before I even had the chance to cast out. So Trev's been fishing these waters for years and it's just so good to be out on the water with somebody who knows what they're doing and, and knows where the fish are. Nah, dropped it. Nah, dropped it. Yeah, got him now. It's only a little fish, but... So we're off to a good start. We were slowly filling the esky up, or what Kiwis call the chilli bin. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Trevally for a second. He's a nice eating fish, mate. Oh, yep, you're on here too. Double hook up. There you go, we we're just talking about this one. Just come off. Oh, I do? Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, he wasn't that big. It's fun catching these fish on light line. Trev was keeping an eye out on the surface for any bait or any workups. We saw some birds heading in a certain direction, so we decided to follow them, thinking that they'll go into a uh, possible workup on the surface. But yeah, it didn't turn out to be anything special. So I got ready to jump in. So I switched the camera on, loaded my gun, turned my camera off, and I started swimming. And within seconds, there was a school of kingies surrounding me. And I didn't even have time to turn the camera on, and I just took a shot. So it was actually a good holding shot and I slowly pulled it to the surface. You need to be so careful when you're fighting kings because once you get them to the surface, they just like to circle. And before you know it, you're tied up in your own line. So it's pretty important to be conscious about your line and not to get tangled in it. So with every rotation that the king does, I consciously lift myself over the rope and stop myself from wrapping up in my own line. So my heart's beating out of its skin at this point in time. You know, I'm over in a new country diving overseas for the first time, new waters, new territory. And the dream was to get a New Zealand kingfish. And I was potentially seconds away from getting one. I reached in and grabbed him by the gills. And that's when I knew the fight was over. And I'd landed my first New Zealand kingfish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised I didn't attract a big bronzy by the way that I was screaming here, but I was absolutely pumped after getting my first New Zealand kingy. <laughs> oh, how good's this? I was in the water for less than 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I heard the kingfish are pretty prominent in New Zealand, but 
I really had no idea. I was in the water for no time at all before this school circled me. So this was a nice little start to my spearfishing over in New Zealand. How good's that? Should we go home now? <laughs> How good's that? As soon as I looked down, I couldn't believe it. There was a school around me. I didn't even have time to set the camera up on my head. I don't think it was filming it. I couldn't believe it, eh? <laughs> Thanks for putting me onto the spot. Legend. Yeah, so big shout out to Trev. You just can't beat local knowledge. He's been fishing these waters for years and he just knew exactly where to put me. We drifted a fair way by this point in time, so Trevor drove me back over and dropped me back in. Oh, that takes the monkey off the back with a kingfish, but I've got to get a snapper now. <laughs> and on that note, it didn't take long at all before I'd spotted my first snapper. So I went straight down to the bottom and I could see that this snapper was a little bit hesitant. So the plan was to flick a bit of sand around here and gain its curiosity. I knew if I could get it to stick around, maybe come a little bit closer, it might open me up for a shot. And that's exactly what it did do. And I nailed it. So it was only a small snapper, so I wasn't celebrating or screaming on this occasion. So as I'm dispatching this snapper, there is hundreds of car wire that turn up, really big mature car wire, and they're going nuts. They're going absolutely crazy. And I knew that something was chasing them. And I knew it was New Zealand kingfish. So I quickly put the snapper onto my line and start grunting as I'm loading. I really need to get to my gun and I need to load it as quick as I can. Kingfish are very curious and if you grunt, you can often attract them if they're nearby. And that's when they turn up. Well, the car wire had moved on and I knew that it would only be a matter of time before the kingies did as well. So I really had to get this gun loaded before I can get a shot off. I'm continuing to grunt just to keep their attention. If I can keep their attention a little bit longer, they might stay there a little bit longer. The kingy takes off and rips the gun straight out of my hand. This shot is nowhere near as good as the last one. I shoot it exactly where you don't want to shoot a kingfish and that's in the gut. And I have no idea the fight that I've just got myself into. Now I know that it was a bad shot and I can't put too much tension or it's going to tear. But it turns and it heads for the rocks. And I know that I need to grab it now and put weight or it's going to get down to the bottom. And that's exactly what it did do. This was painful. There's literally nothing that I can do but just watch on and hope to God that it does not tear. I dive down to try and grab this fish before it tears off and it turns and unfortunately I've got my knife in the wrong hand so I can't grab it by the gills. My heart absolutely sinks. I can see that this kingfish is holding on by the tiniest amount of flesh. The kingfish is going wild and I'm getting tangled in my line, so I untangle myself and I go to the surface. There's not much I can do now, but just try and get my breath back, stay calm, lower my heart rate as much as I can, and just hope to God that this kingfish doesn't keep going nuts and tear off. This is the stage where a lot of divers have drowned. 
every time we dive down, our oxygen depletes from our blood. So it's important to stay on the surface long enough to get that oxygen back into the blood and prevent a shallow water blackout. This is crucial when you're diving alone. Now that I've had enough surface time, I dive down and I hope that I can get it this time. I grabbed this kingy under the gills, which is usually when they give up, but this kingy just did not want to give up. And I could feel the power of this king was considerably more than the last. I managed to get a knife into its head, but it doesn't kill it. So I go back in for another one, but still it's not deep enough. My heart's beating out of its chest and that means that my breath holds are considerably less. There's really nothing much I can do but go to the surface, get my breath back, remain on the surface, double my dive time, regroup and dive back down. So you can see here that I've been on the surface for a minute and seven seconds and that my dive time is 34 seconds. So that's double my dive time. I'm feeling good, I've got my breath back and I know that I'm safe to dive. I can see that this kingy is really hurting by this stage, but I know if it has one more run, it could tear and I could lose it. I go in again with a knife and I push it as deep as I can. And this time it spikes the brain and I win the battle. <laughs> oh, how did I get that fish? Oh, thank God. Oh, if that tore, it would have hurt me so much. It would have hurt me knowing that fish would likely die. Oh, and it's not going to waste now. So this kingy was holding on by the tiniest amount of flesh. <laughs> so Trev was on the other side of this little island here and he was actually fighting a little rat king. I managed to get his attention and uh, got him to come over. When he came over, I decided to play a little prank on him. I got a little snapper. Put me onto the spot here, Trent. It's just, it's, a, it's an all right snapper. Might need a bigger net. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna feed the whole street. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna shoot anymore. So once I got my breath back, I actually realized how fatigued I was from that battle. And it was a good idea to jump back in the boat at that stage. Oh, Trev, you're a legend. Put me on the spot. You're the man. Yeah. So I was carrying on a fair bit, but for me, you know, New Zealand, getting a kingfish, that was just a big dream of mine. And I did it. That's what happens when you shoot them too low. Oh, what a day. Make that first one you look happy oh. with uh, a bit smaller, mate. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. <laughs> best, best dive ever. Best dive ever. I'm setting up uh, Kingfish Spiro charters for anyone <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> I really can't thank Trev enough, Absolute you know? Legend. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been out on the water and I would not have got those fish. Well, that'll do me. I'll put my gear away and fly back home. So Trev sent through a picture of the fish to my girlfriend and she got excited and gave us a call. Hello. Hello. Hi. What was that? What was that fish? Was it a car way? Yeah, it was a car way. No, it was a kingfish. Yeah, it's a big car way. One metre 20 car way. <laughs> Christmas came oh early. Oh my God. Oh, that's exciting. 
and then she popped down to the shops and got some stuff so we could do a nice cook up and invite a few people over for dinner. So the weather was coming over pretty bad so Trev and I called it a day. We went back and Trev filleted the fish and I gave the boat a clean. So the kingies were going to take a bit more time to fill it so we decided to do them once we got back home. I couldn't help but have a bit of fun. Everyone was in such a good mood. The girls were happy they were getting fed. I was happy that I got some kingies and yeah, there was just, it was a good vibe. Just what an epic day, absolutely loving it. And now we're uh, we're cooking it up. Everyone's uh, enjoying it. Let's go see what's happening up there. What are we cooking here, Trevor? Little kingfish, mate. So we did a bit of everything when we did the cook up. We did sashimi, smoked, of course, the kiwis. That's what they like to do. And um, we also did just a few fillets and some batter as well with the snapper. It was absolutely delicious as well. And it was just such a good night, such a good day, such a good night. Just the whole experience was just awesome. So there was a lot of kingfish to eat from then on in and we cooked it basically in every single way that you could. We did sashimi, Vietnamese rolls, ceviches, uh, we cooked it fresh, battered, you name it, we did it. The next episode's an absolute cracker, guys. We head to the Coromandel where we do 10 days of spear fishing and fishing. Absolutely cracker of a time. We get stuck into some good fish and I literally get chased out of the water by some New Zealand bronzies. Please like and subscribe. If you don't like and subscribe, then you're a terrible person and we're not friends. No, I'm only kidding, but Maybe I'm not. Like and subscribe. Stay safe out there, guys, and catch you on the next one.